Now, if you're a Paris investor, opening up the Steam market right now might not be the best idea. If you want to look at it, although the data definitely showed that Paris was seeming to be on an increasing trajectory and the application numbers, when we want to go over to the price, it doesn't seem like we're seeing that same translation. A lot of Paris capsules right now are down quite significantly, especially in the past five days. We can see a massive drop-off starting for all of these, and overall, even the autograph capsules are dropping down a decent amount more than we would expect them to. In fact, at this current point, none of the actual Paris capsules are above that 25 cent price point you could have bought them for at the start of the sale, and we are almost one year past the actual Paris major actually happening. Now talking about the stickers specifically, it doesn't seem like the majority of them are sitting in a proper place either. If we want to look at it, a lot of them are down quite significantly in the past 30 days, some of which are almost 50% in the past 60 days, which is absolutely insane considering these are very high tier looking stickers. Obviously we know the price point doesn't really reflect that, and overall we know there is a massive supply that comes along with these stickers, but the fact that they're down so significantly is obviously not great if you're an investor, especially considering Copenhagen is definitely not even hit that sale point yet. SkinSwap is today's sponsor, and they're also sponsoring you with the top link in the description. They're here to cater to all of your CS2 and Rust skins need, as they're the top place for buying on some brand new skins, selling off your old skins, or trading your new CS2 skins for some new ones as well. They've got everything, and transactions are taking under 30 seconds right now. They also offer the most competitive rate out there as a massive 40% deposit bonus if you just top up today, and their selling feature is one of the best. With an instant cash out and many different payout options, there's no reason not to try them out today. Now interestingly enough, despite what we've been seeing from every content creator, the player numbers are actually still on a very strong increasing trajectory. Now I want to break this down for a quick second. You're seeing a lot of content creators saying that they're not going to be playing the game right now, but I want to focus in on one big specific thing, and that's going to be the fact of the amount of views this video got compared to their previous video. Other than War Owl, all of these have sponsored integrations inside of them, some of them gambling, and therefore it creates a big financial incentive for them to go ahead and hype up something to their audience if they know they're not going to be playing as active in the game. The truth is, if we want to break it down, there's not much content going on inside of the game. Obviously, we know that there's not an operation, not a brand new case, or not something major on the horizon, most likely, because we have the Copenhagen sale, which is going to come before anything else, and therefore, these creators know they're able to monetize this right now, because they're probably not going to be creating any game videos over the next month or so, unless something major changes, in which case, the audience would return to them anyways. Now, the very interesting thing about this is we just talked about how Paris was struggling. The truth is, it actually carries over into Stockholm and Antwerp as well. We can see that the stickers there are not doing anything particularly well, but the most interesting part about this is the case market right now is starting to heat up quite significantly, more than we've seen in a bit of time, and it's very interesting because everything else has not really been seeing the same amount of growth. This is something that I have preached for a significant amount of time, and I think it's starting to come to fruition at least a little bit here, because we talked about these cases, although they're not going to be outstanding short-term investments, if we're talking about the long term, these are going to be the things that are consistently growing because they're going to be having a decreasing supply along with potentially an increasing demand, or at the very least, a stable demand. If we want to look at a lot of these cases and the unboxing numbers, we can see that a lot of them have consistently consistently been unboxed for a significant amount of time, and that's not going to change. The price has changed significantly on these, and although they definitely decrease in the amount of unboxing each specific case gets, we want to look overall, we're on an increasing trajectory for the overall amount of cases we're unboxing. Obviously, some of those are going to be the active duty. We can see roughly last year was about 50%. These cases are definitely going to be ones that you want to avoid. We're talking about the active duty, but everything else is probably going to be an area you can look into. Specifically, the cheaper rare cases are my favorite just because you're going to be getting yourself potentially the best ROI inside of this area because they're going to be such cheap investments to make, but if you want to look at some of the more expensive ones, we're talking Revolver, Spectrum 2, Chroma 3, Gammas, these are going to be potentially areas you want to look into as well because they have consistent demand behind them as well. Make sure you're investing into cases that have consistent demand but also don't have a massive supply unless you want to wait a significant amount of time. This area is so chocked full of potential right now and it's very good that we're starting to see some actual movement inside of this area because it was a stagnant piece for a significant amount of time, but now that the market overall has started to shift away from being completely about the sticker market, we can see the case market is starting to pick some of that up. Now talking about everything Copenhagen, right now there really isn't too much major news on the horizon other than a couple big things. First up, we want to talk about the ROI of these specific capsules. Right now they're all sitting at a price point that if the sale was theoretically to come out right now, you would be ahead and making profit by opening these up. Theoretically, obviously you have to get the equal amount of lucky and you have to get everything according to the averages. However, to go along with that, a lot of these capsules look a lot more tempting than they actually are. That's because there are some pretty expensive hollows inside of it. Usually we see hollows sitting around a $5-ish average potentially at the maximum. Right now we can see that it's very split. We've seen a lot of cheap hollows and a couple more expensive ones that are pulling that up quite significantly. They look very tempting to go ahead and open, but a lot of them are not going to be worth it in the current moment. Therefore, you should not be unboxing these, but you should also not be potentially investing into these, obviously. Talking about some big money, if we want to talk about this, the $60 million tournament is going to be kicking off with the play-in games for CS right now. Now, obviously, $60 million is not advocated just for CS. There's a lot of games inside of it, but it's very interesting. Now, if you're not familiar with this tournament, it was previously called Gamers 8, and it got a lot of hatred 
marketed as being Gamers 8 because it was basically like, face it, it was a lot of Saudi money pumped into a tournament to go ahead and try and to get people to forget about what they did previously. Now, obviously, a lot of people were against this then, and they still are now, but it's a lot of money coming into the scene, and right now, I don't think too many people are going to be fighting against it. Other than that, Electronic just got bought out for $1.5 million from Cloud9. He's on his way over to Virtus Pro. Very interesting there that Virtus Pro would go ahead and pick him up right now, but after a major, that's the time to do so. Now, Valve went ahead and just released their first update in just over two weeks, coming in with one of the most interesting ones we've seen in a while, with the ability to delete storage units that are completely empty. But besides that, this is actually the first update in two weeks because they've been in Hawaii on their yearly trip. Now, this is something I talked about last year. In fact, why we weren't seeing anything after the CS2 release last year, because this happens in April every year. But we can see that there's definitely something going on behind the scenes, in my personal opinion. Although this is definitely something that in the short term, it seems like we haven't been receiving a lot of updates. But when we look at the broader picture, we really haven't been seeing any major updates there as well. And I would find it very unlikely that Valve is not working on something major behind the scenes in the current moment. Obviously, in the short term here, when we haven't seen any updates in the past two weeks, it seems very easy to just point the finger at the Hawaii trip. But I think this is just something that's going to be the last tipping point before hopefully we starting to receive a lot of those major content updates we've been looking for. Now, earlier I mentioned how the sticker market overall was starting to struggle in the current moment. Stockholm, Antwerp, Paris, all of these were not doing great. I talked about the case market being phenomenal for the current circumstances of the market, how it was actually starting to increase right now. But there's actually one area that's been outperforming that quite significantly. And that's going to be the actual skins market. Now, the skins market right now is a very interesting one because the skins market usually moves with a couple big things, one of which is the player base. The second one is going to be new average people coming into the game. And I think that's exactly what's going on right now. Although the top level have seen a significant amount of cheating right now, if you want to look at the overall normal game player dynamic, most people sitting around maybe 10k ELO, they're not running into cheaters every significant game. Obviously, it's a very significant problem at a top level, but at a middle level, we're having a lot of normal people come into the game. They're picking up play skins. We can look at a lot of these play skins I've been showing you on screen right now. A lot of them are up pretty significantly in the past month or two, which is extremely good when we're talking about the longevity of a game like this, that people, even right now, when we have a significant quote-unquote cheater problem for everyone at the top level, we're still seeing a lot of normal people come into the game, enjoy the game, and still have fun playing and participating in the game, stimulating the skins market overall and helping out everyone that's invested. And could you imagine how significant this would be if we could actually start to see some pretty major content updates combined with this as well? Right now, the game doesn't have too much of a pulling point other than the actual game itself, but when we're talking about the reintroduction of Danger Zone and Operation, a brand new case, some new content coming into the game, I think it would be absolutely insane the power this would have. Talking about big things for what's next, first up is going to be the Copenhagen sale. If you haven't seen it already, it's going to be here relatively soon, theoretically, and therefore it's going to be sitting here for way too long. Other than that, there's actually nothing too much that's actually promised. If you want to talk about cases, cases are going to be a very big selling point of the game during forwards, just because we can see right now we're shifting away from the sticker market, going towards the case market, and the case market is where our investments are, and they're also where a lot of the money is generated for Valve. I think there's going to be a lot of interest on side of this area in the near future. That's all I got with you guys so much for watching. Over the rest of the day.